Amen. Hallelujah, church. God is good. And all the time, you know, I'm happy to be here this morning to share this word with you that I believe God wants us to take note of for 2023. This is our first Young Adult Sunday of 2023, and we're excited. I mean, how many of you can see the young people and the fire that's in their hearts for Jesus? Amen? That's worth giving God praise for. Amen? They are our future. They're the future church. Amen? And so we thank God for what he's doing. You know, I'm going to ask that you open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. And as you're opening your Bibles, I'm going to pray one more time. Lord, again, we come to you this morning thanking you for your word. We ask that you speak to us right now. Father, we silence ourselves. We silence our thoughts. We are still, the word says in Psalms 46.10, to be still and know that you are God. In our stillness, Lord God, speak to us. And any distractions, oh God, any voices of darkness, we command to be silent now. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I want to open up by talking to you about one of the greatest voyages in history that was never completed. In fact, it was considered to be an unsuccessful voyage, yet it's one of the most inspiring stories today. Some of you may have heard of it already. Some of you may have not. But in 1914, there was a ship that was getting ready to sail to the Antarctic. It was 28 men who was led by the captain named Sir Ernest Shackleton. And the name of the boat which is funny when you hear the story, the name of the boat was Endurance. And so the name of this voyage was the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition. And it started in 1914. And in fact, it said that it was only an 1,800-mile journey. But guess how long this trip actually lasted? It lasted for two years. They packed enough for 1,800 miles not knowing what they were going to encounter once they set out to sail. And so an 1,800-mile journey turned into a two-year voyage. Imagine that. And so as they were heading out, what happened is that they came into what is called pack ice. I don't know how many of you ever heard of that, but pack ice is when the waters can become so frigid. It can become so cold that the top of the ice becomes completely, I mean, the top of the water becomes completely ice. And so now the boat has a, another mission, not just to get them to where they're going to, but now the boat has to cut through ice. But the thing with pack ice is that the further you get in, one of the dangers is that the ice can begin to surround you. And it surrounds the boat. And now the boat is receiving pressure on every side to the point where the boat can be crushed by the ice. And so now the men have another mission. Now they're they're not just in the boat, but they have to jump out of the boat to try to clear a way for the ice just to keep the boat from being crushed in the middle of nowhere. And so these men are in, and this is a true story, by the way. And so these men are in the boat, and now they're trying to do their best to save the boat. And what happened is that minutes became hours, hours became days, days became weeks, weeks became months. And as I said, it turned into a two-year expedition. It was said that the men would try to stay positive because every day they're out and trying to break the ice, but they can hear on a daily basis the sound of the ice crushing their boat. Until finally the day came where they had to abandon ship because the ice now has finally penetrated the bottom of the boat to the point where waters were flushing in. Cold water at that was rushing in. And so now... These guys are on the middle of a big floating ice, which they call the Elephant Island. And so they're having to now reinvent themselves because this is in 1914. We didn't have cell phones. There was no Instagram. You couldn't DM anybody. They're they're in the middle of ice, no way to communicate. But Sir Ernest William Shackleton was very strategic. 
It is said that he will give his men daily assignment. You go hunt for penguins. I'm sorry for all the animal lovers in here. They, would, uh, they had a group that would go hunt for penguins. They had this group that would try to keep the fire going. They had this group that would fetch water. They had, so every day he gave someone an assignment so that at the end of the day, they can have a sense of accomplishment for doing their assignment. Because he knows where there's accomplishments, there's also the willingness to hold on to hope. 28 men under his leadership. And so, it was said that even to take their minds off of this life-threatening situation, the fact that they may never see their families again, they would come up with activities, one of which is they would actually, on a floating block of ice, they would play soccer. On a block of ice that's floating in the middle of nowhere. But this is what they had to do to try to stay in faith. You guys can see where I'm going? There's things that you have to do to distract yourself from the thing that's coming against you just so you can stay in faith and believe that your day is coming. Hallelujah. And so finally they were able to salvage one of the lifeboats. And so now Sir Ernest William Shackleton and a couple of men from his crew are going to go face the frigid waters. Now think about what they had to go through in their mind to get to this. If a big boat couldn't, couldn't make it in that water, now they're about to go into the little boat and try to go find help. And it said that they would travel at sea for 17 days. When they finally made it to an, uh, an island, it, it was a 36-hour walk just before they reached civilization. And the moment Sir Ernest William Shackleton reached civilization and was able to call for help, he didn't stop. It says immediately he turned back to, to lead a rescue mission to go retrieve the other 22 men that is floating on a block of ice. And so can you imagine this sight? They see that help is on the way. Sir Ernest William Shackleton didn't abandon us. He didn't leave us. He didn't go home. He's not sitting on the fire and like, I wish them luck. He thought more, less of himself and more of them to go back and lead his men. And it is said the reason why this trip was unsuccessful, they never reached the Antarctic. But the reason why it's inspiring is because all 28 men and Sir Ernest William Shackleton made it back home to their families. They all returned home to their family. Their family was expecting them to be gone for 1,800 miles there and back. Not knowing that when they said goodbye to their loved one, they wasn't going to see him until two years later. And what's interesting is that this is a picture of Sir Ernest William Shackleton. From 1914 uh, from, uh, to 1916 was the voyage. But what's interesting is that he stayed and brave and had fierce leadership. And he made the assignments. And they were feeding off of him. But then they found his diary. And in his diary was a different story. In his diary, he didn't know how or if he could bring this man back home to his family. But he knew he had to stay in faith. How many of you know that faith makes the difference? Even if it's the faith of one person. If you just know you heard from God and even everyone else says it's not going to work out. If you can just stay in faith. Hallelujah. You can turn your situation around. And I'm not just talking about any faith. I'm talking about faith in God. See, your faith in God is dependent on your relationship with him. You got to have history with God. When I pray for people and I'm believing God for healing, I remember those days I was in the hospital. And the doctors didn't know if I would make it. The doctors didn't have word. They didn't know what was going on with me. But I knew that God, hallelujah, was a healer. And because I know that God is a healer, I got faith to pray for healing. There's people in here, you've been to a place where you, you were in lack. And the need was right there before you. And there was a deadline that you didn't know if you can make it. And somehow, some way, you're still here today. And so if something ever happens again where there's lack, you can say, you know what, God, I seen it. What does the song say? I seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. 
You made a way where there was no way, and I believe, hallelujah, I see you do it again. That's why it's important when you're going to situations in life, you take a moment to look back. I heard the Holy Spirit say to me one time I was praying, sometimes the only way forward is by taking a moment to look back. Because you got to look back and see, wait a minute, I've seen God move in this area of my life before. It may not even be your story. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. See, that's why it's good to testify. Remember, last year was a year of testimony, amen? It's good to testify because you can hear about somebody who went through the exact same thing you went through. And how God came through for them. And all of a sudden you were discouraged. But now he's like, oh, no, I take heart because God did it before. And the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if he did it before, hallelujah, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. Hallelujah. God is the all-powerful God. He changes not. Thou changes not. We just sing in that song, great is thy faithfulness. Thy compassions, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. We sing, when is he faithful? Summer and winter and springtime and harvest. Sun, moon, and stars. Whenever it is, God is faithful and he can do it. I need somebody to be encouraged and know that God is still on the throne. Power still belongs to him. No one can put him there and no one can vote him out. He reigns from everlasting to everlasting. And that's the God who is on your side. You know, as we were wrapping up last year, 2022, I said, Lord, I thank you for every testimony that, that you gave your people. We were believing you that it was the year of testimony. But what, 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 what is it that we need to believe for in 2023? In 2023... And, and as I was praying, I felt like the Lord began to minister to me because I believe that in some of your lives, there are unfinished business. There are certain things that you've seen God move in your life, but there's still some areas where you're still trusting and holding on to your faith. You're holding on to your faith. I'm here to tell you that faith makes the difference. And so as I was praying, I said, Lord, what should we believe for, for 2023? And I heard, I, and he ministered to me, even up until now, that 2023 is the year of faith. It's the year of faith that, remember, the 2023, 2, 2, and 3, right? What's that? That number equals what? Seven. Seven is the number of completion. I believe that God is getting ready to close some doors in your life that you are believing him for. Amen? And open up new doors. The Bible says in Isaiah, he says, I will do a new thing. Hallelujah. How many of you believe in God for a new season? Come on, how many of you believe in God for something new to happen? How many of you have, have been dealing with something and you've been dealing with it for so long and you're ready to step into a new season in your life? You got to stay in faith because faith makes the difference. You know, as I was praying, I said, Lord, what does that mean? Faith creates a separation. Right? Faith creates a separation for what you believe in God for. Amen? Because, you know, let me tell you, the enemy, no matter what you believe in God for, the enemy will come to tell you that God can't do it. And even if you believe God can do it, what the enemy will say, well, he may not do it for you. But you got to be able to stay in faith and hold on. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, just keep the faith. Come on, tell your neighbor, just keep the faith. Look to another neighbor and say, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you've lost along the way. But as long as you still got your faith, hallelujah, it can make the difference. Hallelujah. There's times when you may not have anything left. But if you still got faith, your situation can turn around. They stood at the walls of Jericho. They didn't have any sledgehammers, but they had faith. And in faith, they opened their mouth and praised God. And what happened? The Bible says the walls came tumbling down. Faith makes the difference. 2023 is a year that you got to stand out and stand up in your faith and believe God. Because as I was praying, you know, I was just praying. And honestly, sometimes it seems like we can be living life but not have any hope for life. Sometimes we could be stripped down to where there's hopelessness. And you're like, if I can just make it. If someone asks you how you're doing, you say, I'm, I'm, I'm here. 
I'm just holding on. But I'm just here to say, if you have God, you are, you're doing much better than just holding on. But you got to stay in faith. Stay in faith. You know, when God is getting ready, and I'm going to show you if you have your Bible still open to Joshua 24. A lot of times in the word, before God moved, there was a separation that he made. And it always comes down to this, whether you have faith or don't. Whether you trust God and put God first or don't. That was a separation that happened in the word. I want you to look at Joshua 24, beginning with the first verse. They are now in the promised land. And Joshua is getting ready to remind the people about how God has come through for them to get up to this point. In fact, in some of your Bibles, it may say the covenant renewed at Shechem or the covenant at Shechem or the Lord's covenant renewed. And so Josh is reminding. Remember, faith sometimes is to, in order to maintain faith, you got to look back and see that God has already performed in your life. Amen. The Bible says in, in Philippians 4 and 6, it says, Be not anxious, but by pray, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And he will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. His peace will guard your what? Your heart and your mind. That's where stress affects you, right? In your heart and in your mind. But the New Living Translation, I love it. It says, Do not worry about anything. Tell God everything you need and then thank him for all he has done. Then you will have a peace that surpasses all your understanding. Because if all you're thinking about is what you need and you don't consider what he has done, then you, your needs will seem to be impossible. But when you think about what you need, but you consider what he has done, you will realize your needs are not greater than the God you serve. So Joshua chapter 1, he's reminding them. And I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took, I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates River. You see, God created a separation. But what, did, what, what, what the separation happened through Abraham's faith. Abraham came from a household where his fathers and his ancestors worshipped other gods. But the Bible says that he took God, removed Abraham from that. And we know Abraham had faith because in Genesis 12, when, when God says, leave thy father's house and thy country and go to a land that I will show you, the Bible says Abraham immediately got up and left. Amen? You see what happens when faith? Faith creates a separation. You see that? Because they stayed behind and worshiped the other gods. Abraham said, I'm going with God. How many people in 2023 says, I'm going to go with God? I'm going to go with what God says. Amen? Because if you, if I, you don't have to turn there, look what the promise God said to him. God says, leave your father's house and your country and go to a land that I will share, that I will show you. The Bible says, God says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people in earth will be blessed through you. Abraham, in order to set out on that journey, had to believe that that was true. That God was not a man that he should what? And so, if we continue reading, God, it says, the Bible says that, verse 3, but I took your father Abraham from the land. Look at that, a separation. Beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. Descendants, I gave him Isaac and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the, the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. That's when they went down to Egypt and later became slaves to the Egyptians, right? But look what verse 5 says. Then I sent Moses and Aaron and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there and I brought you what? That sounds like a separation. I brought you out. 
When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued you there with chariots and horses as far as the Red Sea. But what? But somebody say, but. But they cried to the Lord for help. And he put what? Darkness between you and the Egyptians. What does that sound like? Separation. He put darkness to separate they're, they're the people who were pursuing them from the people he was watching over. When you're in faith, your faith creates a separation that what God, is, what this Bible says, if God before me, who can be against me? I'm staying in faith. I'm staying in God. If you want to get to me, you must pass by God first. And the Bible says, what, we, we dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. To be in someone's shadow must mean that you are in their presence and that they're standing over you. Amen? If I'm standing over someone, when the sun shines, my shadow covers them. Amen? That means when you're abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, you are in the presence of the Most High God. Faith creates a what? A separation. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, when I brought your people, I, I read that, verse 7. It says, but they cried to me for help, and he put darkness, darkness between you and Egyptians, and he brought the Red Sea over them. That's another separation. First, darkness separated them. The sea opened, but the Bible says when the last Israelites passed out, passed through the Red Sea, the sea closed in. And remember, God said through Moses, the enemies you see today, you shall see no more. That was a permanent se separation that happened between the Egyptians and and the Israelites. Amen? Faith makes the what? Faith makes the difference. Hallelujah. And then so it says, he brought the sea over them and covered them. And you saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I, the Lord says, destroyed them, what, from before you. What does that sound like? Separation. And you took possession of their land. You see, you, you came to the promised land. There was people who inhabited that promised land. Amen. But I separated them from that promised land so that you can go and take them into my promises. Hallelujah. It says, verse 9, when Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. Hallelujah. How many of you know that people don't want to see you blessed? Come on. So just, if you, you may not have done anything to you, but for some reason, they just got something against you. This king, the king hired a, a prophet. What was he thinking? He hired a prophet to go speak a curse over God's people. Right? But verse 9 says, when Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam. So he blessed you again and again. Somebody say again and again and again. And I delivered you out of his hands. What does that sound like? Faith makes the difference, church. There are some situations that you can get into, but if you have enough faith in God, he can take it from you. He can separate you from that sickness. He can separate you from that, that curse. He can separate you from that coworker. I've seen him do it. I won't say too much, but I've seen him do it. God, if you stay in faith, see, you can't get sucked in to the drama. You can't get sucked in into the mess because then now you're no different from them. Remember, faith creates a separation. If you're not in faith, you look just like them. But if your faith is not in people but your faith is in God, then you're just going to go with God says. And the separation begins. And so now people must see that you are blessed. Even your enemies will see you blessed. What did David say? He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. They, they, they can see you, but they can't come near you because you are in faith. Come on, somebody say, I am in faith. In 2023, I'm going with God. 
Don't get sucked in. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 2, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Why? How? Through the renewing of your mind. Somebody need to renew their mind this morning. You somebody need to stop entertaining those thoughts. Somebody need to stop entertaining those actions. You can't be quick. The Bible says you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. There's some things you got to separate yourself from so that you can live out the blessings God has for you. Faith makes a difference, amen? And faith creates what? Oh, it sounds like we're on the same page. Hallelujah. Verse 11 says, then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizen of Jericho fought against you and did as the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. I almost want to say termites, you know, okay, amen. <laughs> they all fought against you. <laughs> But I gave them into your hands. It don't matter if you are outnumbered. It doesn't matter who rises up against you. If you are in faith, you got all that you need. And with faith, God creates a separation. Amen? You are never outnumbered. What did Elisha say when the servant came in and said, Master, we are surrounded. Elijah said, calm down. Lord, open his eyes. He went back out and saw that the enemy that had them surrounded was surrounded themselves by chariots and horses of fire. And so God, is, you are never outnumbered. There is more on our side than there is against us. But you got to stay in faith. Amen? You got to stay in faith. Hallelujah. They were outnumbered. You see how many, they're naming tribes, they're naming countries, they're naming people, nations. The Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But, somebody say but. But I gave them into your hands. Hallelujah. That's when you come out of a situation and people are like, I don't know how you made it through that. But God, I don't know how you made it through that. No one else I know made it through something like that. Faith in God makes the difference. Hallelujah. But look what God says. He says, but I gave them into your hands. Verse 12 says, I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you. What does that sound like? Separation. And also two Amorite kings. You did not do it with your own sword. <laughs> so I gave you a land on which you did not toil for. Listen to this. Cities you did not build. You will live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you didn't even plant. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. The New King James Version says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. The word truth comes from the Hebrew word etmoth. Which means sureness, which is what? Faith. To serve God with sureness is like I'm serving him in faith. Come on, somebody say in faith. It says, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River in Egypt. And so throw away anything that you put before God. Throw away that if whatever it is that has taken God's place in your life, if something is in place of God, you're not in faith. You got to get rid of if so, Maybe if it's that attitude, I got to get rid of that attitude. If, if, if my faith is in my job, my job is not my provider. Paul says, and my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. That job is not the source. The job is a resource that came from the source. Hallelujah. What has taken God's place? In 2023, somebody needs to reprioritize and say, God, you are first. What do we say? His word has first place and final authority. Hallelujah. That's how you know that you are in faith. Because your trust is in God and God alone. The Bible says, seek first in Matthew 6, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things shall be added unto you. Because if you got God, you got everything. The Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So why search, why seek after something when I know that I got someone who owns everything? Amen? Hallelujah. 
What verse am I on? Uh, 17. Yes, it says, it was the Lord our God himself, listen to that, who brought us and our parents up from Egypt, separation, from the land of slavery, separation, and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us our entire journey and um, uh, protected us our entire journey and among all nations through which we travel. Amen? And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We too serve the Lord because he is what? Verse 19, Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord serve and serve foreign gods, he will what? He will turn and bring disaster. Why? Because you're no longer in faith, and therefore now you are separated. He will turn and bring disasters on you and make an end to you after he has been good to you. But the people, but you know what? I want to go back to verse 15. Because this is where I really want us to focus on. He says, This is what Joshua's saying now to the people. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose yourself this day whom you will serve. That's, that's a dangerous thing. You, you make sure you are very careful in your choices. He says, choose. Joshua's already creating a separation from anyone else who's not serving the Lord. He said, well, choose for yourself whom you will serve. Amen? He says, if, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether it's the gods of your ancestors that served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't know. You choose who you're going to serve. But you just heard what all he's done for us. After all he's done for us, I will not walk away from his presence. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I need, some, I need to know somebody in 2023 who say, look, as for me and my house, after all God has done for me, after all the times he's made a way, after how he's kept me and covered me, I will not turn my back on him now. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The separation has begun. In 2023, who is willing to stand up for Jesus? You know, it's, 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 it's interesting because on certain matters of the world, it seems like the world has more faith in the church. The, first, the world is willing to stand up and speak and stand for what it believes in, and it seems like the church has gone silent. But God wants to do great and mighty things in 2023, and he's just looking for some faith. He's just looking for somebody who got some faith so he can do it through you, Amen. All God, the Bible says he searched up and fro and he looked for faith. Even the, remember even the centurion who says, Master, you not need to come to my house. Just speak a word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus looked and says, in all of Israel, I have not seen no faith like this. God is just looking for some faith. God is looking for somebody to say, as they say in the Brooklyn Tabernacle song, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Hallelujah. God is going to make an example in 2023 of who his people are and who is not. And faith makes the difference. The Bible says don't worry about those who look like they are excelling off of, off of evil. Don't worry about them. Remember, they're sowing and there's reaping. Galatians says, it says in the book of Galatians, it says that a man reaps what he sows. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature reaps destruction. But the one who sows to please the spirit, from that spirit shall reap eternal life. Therefore, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time. Somebody say at the proper time. At the proper time. Come on, somebody say in 2023, you shall reap a harvest if you do not give up. But you got to stay in faith. It takes faith to keep sowing. It takes faith to keep praying. 
It takes faith to keep fasting. Even if you haven't seen it, it takes faith to keep going and say, God, I, I haven't seen it yet. It doesn't look like it's happening, but I'm going to keep trusting you. It takes faith to say, I will not give up now because I've come too far from where I started. It takes faith to say, God, I know that you've done it before, so that means you can do it again. It takes faith to say, God, you healed that person, so I believe that you can heal me. It takes faith to keep going. It takes faith to keep going because faith, is, is we, because we walk by faith and not by faith. is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Father God, I'm staying in faith. I know it don't look good, but I'm staying in faith. I know I still feel the symptoms, but I'm staying in faith. I put my, I, I, I build my house upon the rock, which is the word of God. And I know that when the rain comes tumbling down, my house shall stand firm because I'm standing on your word and I'm standing in faith. Hallelujah. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. If you're looking for me, that's where you'll find me. I'm staying in faith. I'm staying in faith because my God is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A separation is happening right now. A separation is happening right now. I won't go to it, but in, in, in the essence of time, but there was two other examples where we saw that faith created a separation. It was in 1 Samuel when, when David came and, and heard Goliath defying the armies of the living God. The Bible says that Goliath came every day and every evening for 40 days and say, I defy the, the, uh, the God of the Israelites. And the Bible says that the Israelite army would run every time in terror. Right? But it was one day David was walking and he heard it. And he heard it. And David, remember, faith makes the difference. Faith creates the separation. All the other people ran. But David heard it and said, Wait a minute, who does this uncircumcised Philistine think he is to defy the living God of Israel? And so he says, so what's going to happen if someone kills this man? And the, Bible, and the Bible says that Saul, word got back to Saul and say, there's a young man out there who's, who's asking about what would happen if they killed Goliath. Saul said, bring him to me. And then to his surprise, this young 16 teenage boy who came in slim and said, and this is the man? And David said, yeah, I, I, I have some questions here. What's going to happen to the person who kills that, 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 that blasphemous man out there? And, Paul's, and, and Goliath was like, man, you're a youth. This man has been fighting since his younger days. And David's like, oh, objection. I have a relationship with God. The same God who's, who delivered me from that bear. The same God who delivered me from the line is the same God who would deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. Just tell me when and where, and we'll take care of it. Because he will not defy my God and think he can get away with it. The separation happened right there. And so Saul was like, you know what? Try my armor. Try my armor. And David put it on. He was like, nah, this is not going to work for me. Come on. You're already equipped to do the job God has assigned to you. David was like, nah, I, I have what I need right here. I don't need anything new. I don't need someone else's. That's another thing for you guys. Some of us feel like we can't do the things we desire to do because we don't have what someone else has. God already equipped you with what you need to fulfill your assignment on this earth. You just need some what? Hallelujah. That's all you need. Faith in God. That's all you need. Amen? And so David went out and the Bible says, I love it. It says that, 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 that faith, David was not scared. As they say, as the young people say, he was never scared. You know, we, David got to the battlefield. The Bible says that Goliath advanced towards David. David ran to Goliath. He says, Goliath says, am I a dog that you come at me with a stick? David says, you come to me with a shield and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. On this day, I will defeat you. I will strike you down. I will cut your head off. And I will feed your bodies to the carcasses so that all of Israel will know that I serve the true and living God. David stepped to the fight with faith. He didn't have the warrior's experience. He was a shepherd. Yes, he dealt with some animals. But David knew he had God. The Lord of heaven's armies. 
Did you know that when it says that David was returning, and it was at that time when the, when the Philistines saw that Goliath was killed, they turned and ran. But guess who all had faith now? All the Israelites on this side, they saw what happened. And the Bible says the Israelites pursued the Philistines. And Saul called one of his, one of his trusted warriors and said, who is this young man? And the, and the warriors said, I don't know. Faith created a separation. Now all eyes are on David. Saul kills his thousands. David, his what? Ten thousands. Faith made a difference because even Saul was scared. Even on the, the, the last one, when, when remember Elijah, when God called Elijah to come and speak to the people because the people's hearts were torn now. They were under the rulership of King Ahab and Jezebel. And they turned the God's people's hearts away from God that they began to worship Baal. In fact, it says she had 400, 450 false prophets that were leading the Israelites' hearts away from the Lord. And so now God is like, I need my people. And he sent Elijah to go and present himself. And that's when we found Elijah on the, the mountain of Carmel, Mount Carmel, where the, the competition took place. One prophet of God, what I say, just faith of one. You just need one, if one person got faith, that can change the situation. If one person walks into the hospital room with faith, healing can take place. If one person can say, God, I believe that you can show up and show out, that's all it takes. Hallelujah. One prophet against 450 false prophets. The competition took place. The, the false prophets went first and said, we're both going to light, or we're both going to set up altars. And we're both going to put our sacrifices on our altars. Whoever's altar catches fire without them lighting a flame, that person serves the true God. The false prophets went from morning to night, worshiping and calling on Baal. Baal is not God. There is only one true God. His name is Jehovah, Yahweh, El Shaddai. And so nothing happened. The Bible says that Elijah said, it's my turn to pray. Elijah prayed, and even before he finished praying, fire came down from the sky. Then all the Israelites, they woke up and said, they bowed and said, we serve the God of Elijah, for he is Lord. This is why we got to have faith, brothers and sisters. Because there's people who are lost and don't know where help is. But we, like David, we know where our help comes from. If you have faith, people can see that you move different. You talk different. You don't respond the same way everyone else responds. There's something different about you. I have a relationship with God. I stand in faith because I know God's got me. Even if people turn against me, we, I know that greater is he, hallelujah, that is in me than he that is in the world. And so as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Everybody stand on your feet, hallelujah. This year is a year of faith. You just got to hold on to faith. God is in control. God has not changed. He's still the same God. Just have, hold on to your faith. Everybody close your eyes. I don't know what has happened in your life. I don't know what you believe in God for. But what I do know is that faith makes the difference. Don't be conformed just because everyone else is scared. Everyone else is concerned about the market, the economy. Everyone else is concerned about all these things that are happening and circulating. We have God. And, and, and God responds to faith. I heard someone say faith is the currency of heaven. If you have faith, the Bible says that you can speak to this mountain and say, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And if you believe in your heart and do not doubt, you shall have Whatever you say. Whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe that you received it and it shall be yours. In the book of Mark. Faith. Stop looking at yourself as, as less than or that are unqualified. Stop looking at yourself as I don't have what it takes. I, I don't know if I can make it happen. Don't stop disqualifying yourself. Faith is the qualifier. If you have faith, you got God's attention. God is just looking for somebody with faith in 2023. Because there's so many people who are lost and need to know that God is real. 
And he needs, to, he needs somebody with faith to, to operate and use to get those people to him. We can't be like everyone else. We can't be like the world. We are the church. And we stand in faith. I pray right now, Father God, over every person in this place, oh God. Just lift your hands right where you are, Father God. We ask Holy Spirit that you just begin to minister to your children who are in here this morning, oh God. Lord God, whatever they are in their lives, wherever they are in their relationship with you, wherever they are, Lord, in their relationship with family members and, and the things that they're believing you for, God. God, I ask that you stir up their faith this morning, oh God. Father, thank you that your word shows us how faith makes the difference. Faith creates separation. Father God, we pray that when you look at on the both sides of faith, that you may see us on the side that we have faith and not without faith. Help us to walk in faith. Help us to, to know that it's not easy to walk in faith because sometimes faith will require you to do something that doesn't make sense. Sometimes faith will require you to do something that's contrary to popular belief. But we don't respond to this world. We respond to God. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. Help us, God, to live a purposeful life in 2023. Help us to walk in our purpose. Help us to walk in faith. Help us to believe what you want us to believe, to do what you want us to do, God. Father God, whatever the enemy may try to do to come and discourage our faith, we come against it now in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that we have life and life abundantly. Father God, we would choose to believe the word of God. And just know, church, that the Bible says faith is available, but it comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. That means if you are in a place where you need your faith strengthened, it's found in the word. We got to make sure we're spending time in the word daily. We can't give our attention. Remember, it says throw away every God of this world, of your ancestors. Serve the Lord faithfully. That means we got to put God's word first. Let, our, let the first thing our eyes see in the morning is the word. Because that's the only thing that can help you to go through your, thing, through your day. Not the news. Not the emails. Not the text messages. Not the tweets. Not the feed. It's the word. When the enemy comes, he don't care what anybody tweeted that you know about. When the devil comes, he, he don't care what assignment you got in your job. But if he knows he's coming to you and you're going to respond with the word, he knows he can't touch you. The word is the sword of the spirit. Get to know the word. Stay in faith. This is your year. This is your year for breakthrough. This is your year. Hallelujah. This is your year. God is going to do great and mighty things before you this morning and in this year. But stay in faith. And at this time, with every head bowed and every eye closed, Remember, I said you can only have faith with God only if you have a relationship with him. So if there's anybody this morning who do not have a relationship with God, what does that mean, Pastor Josh, if I have a relationship with God? That you ask God personally to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior. That's how you have a relationship with him. He says in the book of Revelations that I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man come and, and open the door, I will come in and fellowship with them and them with me. God is here, and he's asking for a relationship with you. All you have to do is invite him in. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, and if, if you are here this morning and you don't personally have a relationship, you've never invited God to come into your life, and you want to do that this morning, we can do that with just a prayer. Just lift your hands where you are so I can pray for you. If you're inviting Jesus to come into your life, amen. Amen. If anyone else is, who is in here and you want to receive Jesus this morning as your personal Lord and Savior and say, I will not go another day in 2023 without God as my Lord and Savior. Just lift your hand where you are so I can pray for you. If there's anyone in here who's in here and you say, you know what, I've walked with God and I've invited him already to be my Lord and Savior. But along the way, we became distant. Maybe I have been distracted by the world. Maybe I have been distracted. Maybe I have put other things before him. But this morning, I want to create a change, and I want to put God back first in my life. And I want to rededicate my life to God. If that's you, just lift your hand where you are. I just want to pray for you. Hallelujah. I see that hand. We are going to pray this prayer together. It's the prayer of salvation. For everyone who's going to receive Jesus for the first time, or for anyone who wants to rededicate their lives to him, let us all just pray this prayer together. Say, Lord Jesus... I thank you for dying for my sins. 
I thank you for making a way for me. I believe that you are God. And I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Help me to walk by faith and not by sight. From this day forward, I am yours and you are mine. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.